Hey, welcome back to the channel. Got a 2015 Ford F-350, 6.7 liter diesel, and uh, gonna be draining and refilling the primary and secondary cooling system on it. So go ahead and pop your hood. So with your hood popped, go ahead and locate your primary degas bottle, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove that cap. Make sure your vehicle is cool when you're doing this. And then over here on the passenger side, this is going to be your secondary system here. So let's go ahead and remove that cap as well. All right, so what you want to do next, come over here to the driver's side wheel well. And let me zoom in. You can see right there is going to be our radiator drain petcock. And I went ahead and got a big pan here to catch it when we start draining it. And then... This is also optional, but I got a quarter inch tube here that I'll connect to that just to help uh, drain it and not make a huge mess. All right, so go ahead and grab your quarter inch hose or tube. Like I said, it's optional. You don't have to do this, but it makes it a lot easier and uh, cleaner. You go ahead and attach that to the nipple there. Once you get that on, go ahead and put in your drain pan. And let's unscrew the petcock here. Sometimes these are kind of hard to unscrew. You can use a pair of pliers if you need to. Just be careful since it's plastic. So let me get my pliers here. And just unscrew that. about like that all right so you can see that's starting to flow pretty good here so we'll go ahead and let that do its thing and let's go ahead and uh, see if we can start draining the secondary system all right so while that's draining on the driver's side here come over to the passenger side tow hook here and you can kind of see let me zoom in here your second radiator petcock is going to be right there and i'll give you another look here all right, so over here, looking up through the passenger wheel well, pretty much. Get you another shot of it here. You can see it right there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another piece of quarter inch uh, hose there. Get that hooked up and we'll start draining that one. All right, so just like on the driver's side, let's go ahead and grab our quarter inch hose here. And get that put on that second radiator there. like that and then we'll get it going into our drain bucket here and let's see if we can hopefully twist this pet cock here it's kind of hard to get your hand up in here We got it turned a little bit there. Let me grab a, try a little crescent wrench here. And let me just see if I can get onto it there. Bring it down some more. Just like that. Let's see. You can see, starting to flow in there. So I'll go ahead and let this drain into that bucket. All right guys, so as you can see, looks like the uh, primary radiator is done draining. And you can see, you wanna make sure you have two uh, pretty big drain pans because I think this one's like 20 quarts and uh, same with that one and you can see how much came out of the primary 
So we'll go ahead and let this uh, secondary uh, radiator drain and then we'll come back here. So next I want to go ahead and uh, drain the engine block here because it's still got quite a bit of coolant left in the engine block as well. And let me zoom in here. You can see for the block heater plug is right there. Um, some of your guys' trucks won't have a block heater, but some of the uh, builds will. And uh, as you can see, this one does. So I need to remove the uh, engine block heater there. Um, if you guys don't have that, you'll just have a simple plug there. And I think for the purpose of this video, just to give you guys a better look, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the inner fender well here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start removing all of these bolts along here and those are going to be uh, 730 seconds. Next get you something to pry this out with, just a little clip there. And let's go ahead and pop that off of there. Try not to break it. And of course that broke so I have to get a new one for that. Just kind of tuck that out of the way there. And you got another one right there. And then it looks like another one up in there. And so it looks like, um, not really sure if there was one right here because it was missing. And then there's a couple holes here. So it's probably with this wiring loom that was going in there but it doesn't seem to be attached there. And then come around to right in the front here, we got two eight millimeters right there. Go ahead and remove those. And then just right above that, grab an eight millimeter and let's pull that screw off there. So now we should be able to pull this out of here. So as you can see, that gives us a lot better access to the uh, block heater there. And like I said, this truck has one. Some of the 6.7s did not, and they'll have just a plug there, which will be a 14 millimeter Allen head is what you'll want to use on that to break that free. Um, I went ahead and threw some glove on because my hands are getting tore up here. But uh, So that little green thing that goes around, that's what holds the plug onto there. There's just a couple clips there. So what I like to do is just take my two fingers there on each side and then just kind of pry down and that should unplug it there. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Actually, let me just, let me turn this some. So it's kind of like that and it should be able to just squeeze that off of there. There we go. So as you can see, it's just held on by these two clips right there. And then there's just two prongs in there. And that's what plugs into that. All right, so next go ahead and grab a 32 millimeter socket. I got that hooked up to a swivel here. And we're gonna try to get that out of there. Just like that. Uh, grab a couple extensions. I'm going to go underneath this line here and then go ahead and connect this. And then go ahead and get that put on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and try my impact. And hopefully we can break that free with the impact there. So get it pushed on there and let's go ahead and try it. All 
All right, so we'll see we got that broke free. Get this out of the way here. And let me go ahead and grab a big container we can slide under this really quick. All right, so as you can see, I just put a little bit of uh, trash bag right on top of the starter. That way the uh, coolant doesn't flow all over that starter. And then come down below here. You can see I just got a little tote here. Hopefully that catches the majority of it because uh, I have a feeling this is going to make a mess. So let's go ahead and start pulling that slowly and we'll see how much comes out. I'm just going to do this by hand. So I'll kind of just let that dribble for now because it's going straight into my pan right now. So I'm actually going to leave it kind of like that and we'll let it uh, drain out. All right, so while we let that engine block drain, let's go ahead and uh, close up the primary radiator uh, petcock. Zoom in here. So go ahead and close that. Just like that. Go ahead and remove your tube there. So we're good on that one. So it looks like our secondary is all done uh, draining out as well. Just down to a drip here. And you can see uh, about right there on a five gallon bucket. So there's quite a bit in that one as well. So let's go ahead and uh, close that petcock. So same thing. Let's go ahead and close that one up. Just like that. And then go ahead and remove your hose. So really quick, I'll show you. Um, if you guys are having trouble getting that one tied or loosened or whatever on the secondary radiator, you can always pull this little plug here and then uh, reach your arm up and through here. So your left hand, and then also reach with your right hand up here. And that way you can use a uh, fingers on both hands to try and uh, help tighten that up or uh, break it free. All right, so as you can see, that's kind of down just to a drip now. So let me go ahead and uh, pull that out the rest of the way and see if any more comes out. And then we'll go ahead and uh, stick it back in and put everything else back together. like so go ahead and let that drain the rest of the way all right guys so as I got my uh, plastic trash bag out of the way there uh, I guess I lied there is a drain plug or a block drain plug right there I did not see um, so we probably didn't have to remove that um, looks like it's a it's gonna be a 3 8 allen head but there's no way of getting a socket or anything on there because the starter is somewhat in the way. Um, I can get a little bit of an Allen head on there, uh, but before I go ahead and try anything, I wanna go ahead and disconnect the batteries. Um, that way I don't arc it or anything on the starter there. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I'll just grab an eight millimeter and all we need to do is disconnect both uh, negative cables on each battery. Just kind of like that, and I'll just get a just get a rag stick in between here. That way it doesn't try to arc. And then same thing on the driver's side battery here. All right, so now it's safe. Stick your Allen head in there without it arcing on the starter. So I think what I'm going to try is to uh, I got this old uh, extension here and I think I'm going to put that on the ball part of the Allen head wrench here and then I'll use a little sledgehammer and see if we can kind of break this free 
because um, I really don't want to remove the starter if I don't have to. So let's go ahead and try this first. Just make sure you're up in there all the way. So it looks like it loosened a little bit, but I think we might be hitting on the starter now. Yeah, I see our Allen head right there is hitting on it. Um, if it was just a little shorter, we'd be okay. So it did loosen up a little bit at least. All right, so let's give this a shot. Got an old uh, junky 3 8 allen head and you can see i went ahead and just cut a little bit off on the tip there so let's see if that's enough to get it cleared past the starter and looks like that's going to work let me uh i'm not sure if i'll be able to do it by hand here let's see if i can break it free now yeah it's still too tight on there so let me grab my extension again here except this one doesn't have the ball on the end of the allen head let's just see if i can still get it in there though okay let's see if i can get a better grip on it now Grab my other one here. All right, so before I go ahead and do that all the way, let me grab another trash bag and I'll cover that starter up. All right, so I got that covered and then our my bucket and pan underneath here. So let's go ahead and see and how much comes out of this. All right, guys, so as you saw, I uh, got that block drain plug pulled and really nothing more came out than what came out of this. Uh, it was barely anything. So um, I don't think it's worth it then to pull that uh, engine block plug there. Um, I'll show you here once I get all this put back together how much we got total out of uh, pulling both of these. But uh, I think it's just worth it just to pull the uh, block heater uh, plug there and you'll be good and not have to worry about the uh, lower engine block plug there All right guys, so like I said that was a disappointment um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, engine block plug back in you can see if you guys decide to do this which I wouldn't recommend um, Looks like there was some red Loctite on there. So I'll go ahead and put some more uh, red Loctite on there and get this in and then we'll get the uh, block heater back in place all right guys, so as you can see, you got the plug back in there. Um, I didn't record it because I needed to let my uh, camera charge. Um, plus I need to get two hands in there and it's just not a lot of room in there. So I did get that back in. Like I said earlier, I did put uh, plenty of red Loctite on there and you want to get that as tight as possible. Um, so it is uh, feasible with the starter in, so you don't have to remove the starter, but like I said, I don't recommend it. I just recommend pulling the um, uh, plug there for the uh, block heater so let's go ahead and uh, get our block heater put back in and then uh, our inner fender well on and so go ahead and uh, put that back on and you can see there's an o-ring around it just make sure that's in good shape still and let's go ahead and screw that in there get that started by hand 
All right, let's go ahead and grab your 32 millimeter socket again. And let's get up under this line here. And go ahead and tighten that up. And then I'm just gonna lightly hit that with the impact again, just to make sure that's tight on there. Then go ahead and grab your, find your plug in here. And uh, let me go grab some uh, dielectric grease first. Put some of that in there. I just got some uh, dielectric grease here. Let's just see if we can squeeze some in here. I think I got a hole in my tube here. Yeah. Squeeze some out of here then. Just gonna put it up in here. And let's go ahead and plug that in there. Get your holes lined up. And then just push it on there. And then like I said, these green green clips here pretty much hold it on there. So just like that. And then before we put our cover back on, I'm going to go ahead and just hit this with some uh, brake clean. Next, let's go ahead and get our wheel, our inner fender well back in place here. Get your 8 millimeter bolt started. these two as well. And then all these. Then you go ahead and tighten them all. And then I did get a new uh, push pin for this right here. Next, you'll want to come over to your uh, driver's side here and get up underneath it by the differential here uh, for the driver's side engine block. So there's no plug on this side, um, but this is your oil cooler here. So what we're going to do is disconnect this line here, and you can see that goes up into the engine block. So if we pull it off here, we should be able to drain the uh, driver's side of the engine block. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so go ahead and grab a pair of pliers or... Something to get this uh, hose clamp off. I like using some vice grips here. And uh, see if I can get my arm up in here. Go ahead and squeeze that. that point and we can just grab a pair of channel locks or something let's see if we can wiggle this just to kind of break it free here just don't squeeze too hard on it and then make sure you got a drip pan and let's go ahead and pull that off Okay. Go ahead and 
about that drain. Alright, so that's pretty much done. Uh, it doesn't take very long. I got maybe uh, probably a good quart or two quarts out of that. So then go ahead and uh, put your hose back on here on your cooler. And then let's get our hose clamp back in place. And on these clamps, style clamps, you want to make sure you get, get it lined up just the way it was before. If not, you can run into leaks. Just like that. And then grab you some brake clean and I'll go ahead and spray that off real quick. All right, so really quick here, I'll show you what I pulled out of all the coolant. Uh, this bucket here was one I had that came out of the uh, engine block and then the uh, block heater plug there. So really you can see there's really not that much that comes out of there. So it's up to you guys if it's worth pulling that uh, engine block heater or not. Um, I'd say maybe another quarter of a quart or half a quart went on the ground as well. So, And then of course, like I said, this was a secondary cooling system. And then uh, those two were from the uh, primary. So let's go ahead and uh, start filling. All right, guys. So before I go ahead and start filling, I just want to show you. So I went ahead and picked up this uh, OEM Tools 24444. And what it is is pretty much a vacuum uh, bleeder kit for the cooling system. Uh, pulls a vacuum on it and then fills the uh, system with coolant. So you get no air pockets in anything. So I thought I'd give it a try. This is what Ford recommends you use on this engine. I'm sure you'd be fine just doing it the old fashioned way. Uh, but I'll go ahead and give this a shot. This was like 80 bucks on Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link in the description if you're in interested in uh, going that route. And then the uh, main reason I wanted to get all of that orange coolant out of the engine block and everything is because Ford recently made the switch to this yellow uh, coolant. They do not make the orange coolant for this vehicle anymore. Ford has switched to the yellow, which they are using in uh, the majority of their vehicles now. And they do say that you can actually mix this with the orange with no problems. So if you got a little bit left over in your engine, uh, they say do not worry about that. This will mix with it just fine and you'll be okay. So I also got some... Uh, Quite a few gallons of distilled water here which i'll be mixing with this stuff uh 50 50 and then uh i also got this off amazon so i'll put a link in the description for that as well so you can check that out all right so i got this clean five gallon bucket here i'm going to be uh mixing my coolant and with my distilled water in so i'm going to go ahead and pour a gallon of this distilled water in here And then I'll do the same with a gallon of coolant. Dump that in. And then I'll go ahead and do another gallon of distilled water and gallon of uh, coolant. All right, so that gives us four gallons to start off with. All right, so let's go ahead and hook up the uh, vacuum system here. And for this, you're going to want to use the uh, 40 millimeter uh, adapter that'll just go right into the coolant reservoir there and then go ahead and uh, stick this end down in there just like that and then you'll go ahead and uh, tighten that up down you don't have to go too tight that just kind of goes down on it and then you can see it kind of creates a little bit of a suction on there. It's about like that I think just to keep it from popping out of there. And then uh, this end will go into our uh, coolant bucket there which I'll do in a minute here. But first actually let me zoom out so you guys can see better. Next go ahead and grab your Venturi valve here which is going to be this guy and you're going to want to Connect that up to there. Just 
just like that. And then make sure all your valves are closed. And now these valves do go either way. Uh, that's open, that's closed, or you can go the opposite, that's open and that's closed. So make sure those are all closed. And this is just like a vent tube. Uh, there could, coolant could come out of this, so just watch where you put that. And then let me go grab the air compressor hose. So go ahead and get your air hose on there, just like that. And then um, I'm going to slowly open this and then also go ahead and open this and then it'll start pulling a vacuum from the cooling system. You want to leave this one closed because we're not going to fill it with coolant yet. We're going to get the whole vacuum going and then your uh, coolant hoses and everything should start collapsing. And then uh, once they're fully collapsed and it's not taking any more vacuum, then we'll be done with the uh, air system so we can take all that off and then we'll just be using the uh, vacuum that's in there and then we'll start sucking in the uh, new coolant here out of the bucket. So go ahead and open this. That should start pulling a vacuum on it. And you can see our gauge is starting to go up into the negatives. So that it's pulling the vacuum on the uh, cooling system there. And then you can also see our uh, coolant hose is starting to collapse here. Alright, so we want that to go down to at least uh, negative 24. Uh, according to the instructions that came with the kit. So I'll go ahead and let that uh, get down to 24 there. All right, guys, so I went ahead and uh, let this sit for about five minutes or so, and that's about as much vacuum as I can pull from this system. Uh, so we're looking at about negative 18 right there or so. So next, what you want to do is go ahead and shut this valve off first. And then your airline valve there. And then as you can see, coolant hose is still collapsed there. And let's go take a look underneath. And then you can see also our uh, lower radiator hose and all that is also collapsed. And so what's also nice about this system is um, I'm going to let this sit for a couple minutes here just to make sure um, I have no leaks in the cooling system. Because if you had any leaks in the cooling system, you would be losing your uh, vacuum as well. So we'll let this sit for a little bit and then we'll come back. So while that's sitting and checking for leaks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill a couple of these empty coolant jugs uh, with 50-50. Uh, that way once it, my 5-gallon bucket starts getting low, I can go ahead and start pouring this so the uh, vacuum system doesn't suck in any air. And then what's nice about these bottles is you can see... The two quart range right there so i'm going to go ahead and fill that with some distilled water and then we'll uh use the coolant to take it up to four quarts so now we're good to go with two more gallons so then what you want to do is grab your coolant end here and you can see has a little bit of a filter there to filter out any uh, big particles. But like I said, this five gallon bucket was clean. I wiped it out and rinsed it out and everything. So we should be good. So go ahead and stick this down in there. And then you wanna make sure you get that down to the bottom there. Cause you don't want this to suck any uh, air up it. And actually, let me get a clip to where I can clip this to the side there. All right, so what I ended up using was just a pair of vice grips. I didn't go too tight because you don't want to pinch the line. Because uh, what was happening was, once I got that down at the bottom of the tank, it wanted to float up. So I went ahead and just uh, put it down at the bottom, put this on, and we should be good to go. And now, uh, before we uh, go ahead and disconnect our air, we need to purge out all this air that goes down into the uh, bucket there. And the way you do that is we're gonna open up our air valve again, and then our Venturi valve, 
and then we'll slowly open the coolant line valve here. We'll let it start sucking up until it gets right about here. Then we'll go ahead and shut it off and then we can disconnect our air and all that and then we should be able to open that valve and start flowing. And then really quick here, let's take a look at our gauge, see if it's moved at all. And you can see we're still right at uh, negative 18, so not seeing any leaks, so we should be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and open our air valve. And our Venturi valve. And I'll slowly open this coolant until we get right about here and I'll shut it back off. You can see it started to come in a little bit. So let me go real slow. So I'm good with that, so we'll go right to there. Go ahead and shut this off. And then your air valve. And then we can go ahead and uh, disconnect this whole thing because we won't need it. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to slowly open this. It should start filling our system. I'm not going to do full blast. We'll just do that. And then you can see it starts sucking that. Actually, I'll go a little more. And then you want to watch your level. As soon as that starts getting low, grab another uh, gallon of 50-50 um, and we'll fill that up. And then take a look up here. You can see we still got quite a bit of vacuum on there. So it's gonna take quite a bit. So you can see it's starting to get a little low there. I'm just gonna go ahead and add another gallon just to be safe. And so as this is filling, keep an eye on your coolant hoses and then also your cold fill range here because we wanna get it right at that line right there. I'm gonna go ahead and open this a little more. Make it a little faster here. And you can see it's starting to get a little low again, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and mix some more gallons here. So while I go ahead and mix a couple more gallons, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off just to be safe so we don't suck in any air. So I'll go ahead and open this again, and as you can see, Coolant hoses are still collapsed here. So let's go ahead and continue filling. And actually right there, you can see we're right at the uh, fill line there. So we'll go ahead and continue filling here until all of our vacuum's gone. All right, so as you can see, our valve's still open and uh, you can see we're out of vacuum now. So let's go ahead and disconnect this really quick. So go ahead and close your valve here and then just twist this off. And then as you can see, we're uh, just a little bit above the cold fill range, so we should be good. And I'll show you real quick here. You can see now our uh, coolant hoses aren't collapsed anymore. And let's go ahead and take a look underneath here. And you can see same thing on our uh, bottom radiator hose. You can feel they're full now. So then go ahead and grab your radiator cap. Let's go ahead and put that on so nothing gets down in that. And let's go ahead and move over to the secondary radiator. All right, so on the secondary one here, it's gonna be similar, but uh, you're gonna wanna take this fitting off and pop that off 
and I believe we're gonna need the uh, this cone one here because this is just a like a bleeder hose here you can see there's nothing attached to it um, so we're not gonna get a vacuum on it unless this is blocked off so I think if we get the cone in here that should uh, block that this hose off so let's go ahead and uh, stick that on there and tighten that down and actually that doesn't seem like that's gonna work so let's see if we got a different adapter here so let's go ahead and try this uh, 31 millimeter adapter maybe that's enough to plug that up seems like that got good suction on it so let's go ahead and try that and tighten it just a little more okay and then go ahead and uh, grab your airline or your venturi valve connect that on get your air hose Make sure all your valves are closed again. And let me see if I can get you guys a better angle here. All right, so let's go ahead and start pulling a vacuum. So again, open your airline. And then turn it off. You can see that one goes a lot quicker. So we'll go ahead and let that build up. Alright guys, so on the secondary system here, you can see I can't get it above a uh, major 10 there. And what's happening is I'm leaking from this hose here. You just stick my finger on it. You can see it starts to climb. But if I let off, it goes back down. So let me shut this off. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just uh, pinch off this hose here right at the end and see if that will work. And just something kind of like that. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. All right, so that seems to be working. So I'll go ahead and uh, let it do its thing, and then I'll come back. All right, so just like the other side, uh, the primary, the secondary here looks like we can only get to negative uh, 18. So I went ahead and let this sit for a few minutes, and nothing seemed to be dropping. So we should be leak-free on the uh, secondary system as well. So again, you go ahead and remove all your air. So we're not going to need that anymore. And then as you can see, I'm all full of coolant here. So we should be ready to go ahead and open the valve there. So I'll go ahead and open this and uh, we'll go until the uh, vacuum runs out again. And if we need to, we'll top it off. And you can see starting to lose pressure on this one as well. see I may have to add another gallon there all right so as you can see pretty much lost all our vacuum there and I actually didn't have to add any more and you can kind of see here on the side you can see our full mark is right there so we are just a little bit over it but once I pull this off here that should settle down to where we should be and I'll come over here you can see that's about how much coolant we got left here. So let's go ahead and remove this. I'll go ahead and remove my vice grips here off the breather hose. Tuck that back down there. And go ahead and unscrew this. Pull off our adapter here. 
See, when you, let me readjust the camera here. All right, so as you can see, our level is right at the fill range. So we should be good on that as well. So let's go ahead and uh, put our cap back on here. So really quick, I'm gonna go ahead and empty this bucket into one of our uh, empty containers since it's already pre-mixed. And then I'll calculate and see how much we used so you guys can use that as a reference. So now we can go ahead and connect our batteries again since we just connected them for that engine block drain plug there. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start it. And then come on over here and let's go ahead and uh, turn on our heat all the way high and then also turn off our AC and we'll turn on our defrost all the way up. Let's go ahead and uh, let this get up to temperature. All right, so we'll go ahead and let that run and then we'll check our uh, upper radiator hose once it gets warm. Make sure the uh, thermostat's opened up and everything. All right guys, so I can't seem to get this up to temp. Uh, just sitting here idling. You can see my uh, temperature is right about there. Um, I do have hot air coming out of the vents. So the heat of course is working, but uh, the uh, upper radiator hose isn't hot yet, so the thermostat hasn't opened. So I'm gonna go for a little drive here and then uh, come back and we'll check and see if the uh, thermostat opened up and see if we need to add any. All right guys, so as you can see, just got back from a drive and you can see my water temp there is at normal operating temperature so let's go ahead and uh, pop the hood and we'll uh, check our level here all right so our uh, upper radiator hose is hot to touch which means the thermostats did open up and coolant started flowing through the system and you can see our level dropped just a little bit uh, but not much um, but it is hot, so it's expanded. So I'm gonna let this cool overnight. So that should drop that down just a little bit and we may need just to top it off. So I'll go ahead and check that in the morning. All right, so I got my light shining down so you guys can kind of see, but the secondary reservoir there, you can see that also dropped down just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and let that cool overnight as well and top that off. And you can see that one's still kind of a pinkish color because um, there's probably quite a bit of coolant that was left in the EGR cooler and all that still, so that mixed in, but Ford claims that's okay if those do mix, so. Like I said, I'll go ahead and uh, check both reservoirs in the morning and uh, top it off if needed. All right, so that's gonna do it for the video. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool overnight, and then we'll go ahead and check our levels in the morning, top them off if we need to. And again, this is a 2015 Ford F350 6.7 liter diesel. And I went ahead and uh, drained the primary and secondary cooling system. And then also drained the engine block on the passenger side there. Pulled the engine block plug, which I don't recommend. As you guys saw in the video, I would just go ahead and uh, pull the engine block heater, drain a little bit out there. And then on the uh, driver's side block, just go ahead and pull the uh, oil cooler line there. That'll get most of your coolant out of there. And then also, um, in the morning, just go ahead and double check underneath um, with the radiator petcocks and all that. And then the plugs we pulled, just go ahead and check those and the lines just to make sure nothing's leaking. And then as you can see down there, I got uh, all my waste coolant. And it looks like we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gallons to be safe. Uh, seven and a half looks like, but I'll just say eight gallons. Um, we did overbuy, we bought seven gallons of coolant and then seven gallons of distilled water, which we didn't need that much. We just weren't sure how much was gonna come out of this. Uh, so I think you guys will be safe to get uh, at least five gallons of coolant and uh, five gallons of distilled water. And uh, that should be more than enough to get this job done. And if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, 
just let me know. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, as always, subscribe to my channel. Check out some of my other videos. Got a few on this truck. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.